All right, and I think we are on class six, uh, as far as I can remember. <clears throat> oh, and uh, did you guys get the, the diagram that I sent for the last class? Which one? Uh-oh. Uh, good question. I didn't print it off, so I don't have it printed off. Let me think, let me think. I think it was the diagram where I had like like a heart in the middle and like a the sand greater than. No? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, you guys should have a well, I can't say you have a copy because you don't have a copy. Someone will get you a copy because I emailed it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, I'm glad that the that the Sparks books came in. I'm really glad for that. Uh, it's funny because this this was just kind of on my heart. I know you can't read that, but it was on my heart <laughs> uh, earlier today. Just considering the class, praying, praying for the class, praying for you guys, praying for myself. Uh, <clears throat> Not sure if I mentioned anything about prayer, or if, or if I mentioned anything about prayer in here, like devoted just to a chapter or something. But we will, we'll, we'll, we will mention it. But um, it's good to just is and not 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 even just because uh, you're in Bible school, but it, it's good to just pray, considering what will be shared that the Lord would take anything that He wants to take from whatever is being shared. And this, this goes even as far as like at a Bible conference or uh, during a Sunday service or a Wednesday service or any class that you guys have. But just, you know, be in prayer that, that the Lord would take anything that He wants to take during that time and I'll just say it this way, to do that which he desires to do in the heart. Okay, I'm not even going to say what I believe to be what he desires to do in the, in the heart. I'm just going to leave it blank so that God can fill in the blank. And that's the best way to do it. <clears throat> uh, but I was thinking about uh, just for whatever reason, I, I just wrote down right here, the school of Christ where the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And like I said, this was, this was like earlier today, and I just jotted this down, so I, I want to go ahead and read it. And, uh, and ultimately, that's, that's what we want to come to. I think, do you guys remember that diagram that we had uh, in our second class that we had, where, where it's like all the understanding of man, and it's being funneled, uh, coming to the testimony, and then from the testimony, it's being funneled even further, and finally, it comes to a point. And at that point, we find Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God Himself. We find a person at that point, and from then on, it continues. Not, not knowing about things or this or that. No, all things now are working well. All things are always working together for the good, and the good is found in the face of the Lord. That is the good. And I, I define good by uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses like uh, 3 and 4, somewhere around there. And it says basically this, And God saw the light, that it was good. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And the light is found in the face of Jesus Christ because he himself is the light. You don't find it anywhere else. Now I did mention this, there is the light of the testimony and the scriptures are the testimony of Jesus Christ. But the the light of the testimonies of the testimony directs and points to the true light, the person himself. So, <clears throat> excuse me. With everything, and this is just the way, I, the way I, uh, I look at it, with this class that we're even having, 
It's just there for one purpose. So if the Spirit of the Lord can take it, do what He wants to do in your heart. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit <laughs> in a second. Um, and just kind of like a little bit mention about Him. And that is basically... <coughs> All right, I think we may have lost a connection, so can you still hear me? Yes, we can still hear Okay. Do you want me to go ahead and go on? Yeah, there you are. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's always good to see you guys. Uh, so even, even this class, for me, and the way I see it, is that it's not so much like a subject, you know. Don't, don't freak out and don't get upset when I say this. All right? God could care less what we are learning in Bible school. All right? He really doesn't care what we learn in Bible school. What He does care is if what we are learning he can use to direct our heart, to prepare the ground of our heart, so that our heart may turn and come to a person, His Son. That's what He cares about. In the Scriptures, He doesn't care what great teaching someone is teaching, what great doctrine someone is declaring. He doesn't care about that. What He cares is whether the Scripture is being allowed to be what God created it to be, the testimony of Jesus Christ. And that testimony is designed and purposed of God to bring us unto Christ. That is it. That is the, the final goal of the Scripture. That is the goal of everything and anything that is of God. That's what He cares about. So, uh, even just looking at this class or even just studying the Bible, because that's the name of the class uh, on studying the Bible, just things on studying the Bible, notes on studying the Bible. It's not a subject like Old Testament survey, New Testament survey, uh, the historical books or the epistles or anything like that. No, no, no. <clears throat> and not even this class on studying the Bible. What I want to talk about just a little bit before we go into some of the other notes our lesson book, is the school of Christ, all right? It doesn't have to do with facts. It doesn't have to do with times. It doesn't have to do with peoples and places, specifically. It has to do with coming to a person, where the Spirit of God takes all the times in the Scripture. There's several times that are, that are mentioned in the Scripture. I'll just mention just a few. The time of life, the appointed time, when the time came, the fullness of the time, all right? Uh, the Passover, the time of the Passover, the time of the feasts, the time of the sacrifice, all these times, all these places, Jerusalem, Canaan, um, Golgotha, all these places, and all these peoples, Adam, Noah, David, Solomon, the kings, the prophets, Elijah, Elisha, all these places, all these times, all these places, all these peoples, the Holy Spirit gathers them all up and brings them gathers them all up and in our heart brings them all to a person because that's the way it all works with the Spirit of the Lord, okay? So once again, concerning like the school of Christ, not, it's not a subject. It's not, this, it's not this class. It's not how to study the Bible or on studying the Bible, just thoughts on studying the Bible. It's not Old Testament survey. It's not New Testament survey. It's not the epistles. It's not a class to be studied for. It's not a class to be passed or failed. Like pass or fail a test. No, no. The school of Christ where the Holy Spirit is the teacher 
is where He has been working before we were born again. He continues working after the moment we are born again, all to do one thing, bring the full attention of the heart and by His work, cause the heart to turn to a person. Once that happens, then He continues with that one person. Not a different theme, not a different subject, no, 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 no. But in every theme and in every subject, we begin seeing one person. It all comes down to one, and that one is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Son of God Himself. And it always works like that. Uh, <clears throat> I'll just keep on reading here. The Holy Spirit has been working since before we were born again and continues to work the same work. He doesn't change. The Spirit of God doesn't do one thing at one time and then change to something different. No, no, no. With God, it is always the same. With God, it is always one. He does the same throughout, right? <clears throat> So the Holy Spirit has been working since before we were born again and continues to work after we are born again. The same work. And that work is to come to know Christ the Son. All right? <clears throat> now, this is concerning a person who's not born again, one who's not born again. How can you truly know a person except they are present? And what do I mean by that? Here's, here's a good example. You guys know me to some degree, right? To some degree. I mean, you, you see me right now. We've had a couple of classes. You know what I'm like. You kind of know where I'm going with everything that I'm sharing. But you really don't know me. You truly don't know me. Unless I'm right there in your presence and we're communing face to face on a daily basis, then you will really begin to know me. But right now, the knowing that we have, I mean, that's how you know me, and this is how I know you as well. Right now, the knowing we have is from afar, literally, <laughs> literally from afar. Well, God doesn't want that type of knowing. So therefore, for one who's not born again, they must be born again. Christ must be present. All the knowing of God in the scriptures, in the Old Testament scriptures, from, were from afar, from, from far away. God was one place, man was completely another place. All right? Once a person is born again, everything's changed. God is now inside. He's not somewhere far off away. No, He is inside, closer than we even know. I mean, he is he has filled our soul with his very own self. All right, that's the that's the kind of knowing that God that God is after. All right, now for us who are born again, how can you truly know a person if you do not know that they are present? Therefore, Christ must be revealed. Remember that example that I gave with my pen, my shiny pen? It's, it's a great example in this respect. It was always here. In fact, it continues to be here. But until I made it, until I made what was present known to you, you all were completely ignorant of what was present. And that's the thing with, with us. Until God Himself makes known His Son who is present, we continue completely ignorant. Even though we can read about Jesus, we can learn about Jesus, it's all about, 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 about. Until He is made known to the Father, we really don't know Him. Okay? <clears throat> so, in the school of Christ, that we are all to enter, that our hearts are all to come to, all there is to learn is Christ Himself. Uh, there's no pass or fail grade in that sense. But 
the Holy Spirit does not want us to fail to come to know the Lord. Like a, uh, a tutor, a personal tutor, there, a, the goal of a personal tutor is that we learn something better or get a better grip on it. Well, the Holy Spirit is way greater than that. He, he brings our heart where our heart cannot come on its own. He directs our heart where our heart cannot be directed on its own. He brings us where we would never even think to come. He does what we could never do. And as I stated in one of the previous classes, we have a concept of the Lord. That's just our concept. I still have concepts, you know, and whether my concept is quote unquote true according to the scripture or not true according to the scripture, it's still a concept. It is still, listen to this, it is still not the truth. And the Holy Spirit brings our heart unto the truth, who is Christ himself. All right. So I just wanted to read that uh, concerning the school of Christ because that's ultimately what it comes down to. For our heart to be directed and directed and directed until finally it comes down to a point, and at that point, we find the Lord Himself. And from that moment onward, it is literally all about Jesus. It's no longer the people's places, things, times, events, da 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 da. It becomes all about a person from that moment onward. And it continues to be all about a person. So that's, that's really what, um, what the School of Christ is all about. <clears throat> all right. So I've got uh, the approach for and while studying the Scriptures. And I'll just read. I don't know if you guys have read this. The, the lesson book, but I just kind of go over it every once in a while and then look at, look at what I do. You guys do anything like this? Don't be afraid to. If, if no one else lets you do this, hey, I'm going to let you do this. Don't be afraid to do stuff like this. See that? Look at that. Look at that. You guys see that? Yay. Yeah, yeah, there I'll show everyone else that too. Don't be afraid to mark anything up. If no one lets you write in their in the in their lesson book or textbook or whatever, that's fine. I'll let you write in this one. Write in. I do. I write it up. Uh, write, mark notes, jot, do whatever you want. Do it with the scriptures also. You know? Because what it's doing. <clears throat> have you ever heard the word, well, yes, forgive me for asking it that way, the word meditate. It causes you, yeah, I know it. It causes you to consider the scriptures. And what happens when you, can, when you consider the scriptures is that the Holy Spirit kind of says, all right, now, you know, all right, now we can go. And then he causes you, as you're considering the scriptures, to begin to consider Jesus. It's like you can be reading a passage in the scriptures and it's, you, it may be talking about one thing and then the Holy Spirit kind of jumps in, begins directing our heart and kind of says in a roundabout way, hey, how about consider Jesus? And then your heart's being directed unto a person at that moment. And that's what he desires to do. Okay, here's Psalm uh, 127 verse 1, a song of degrees of Solomon. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. All right. Now everybody has a different understanding uh, concerning the scriptures. That's great. That's fine. You know, that's fine. The Holy Spirit wants to bring us all from our understanding to the understanding of God. And I will say this. <clears throat> I will say this. 
because of Christ's, because of the death of Christ on the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection, listen to this, there is no more a was or shall be. There is only what is. Now, you can believe that, you cannot believe that, it doesn't matter to me. Before a person's born again, Jesus isn't in their heart. Christ is not present in their soul. Right? They're just not alive. There's no life there. At the moment of new birth, Christ is present. He is there. That is, if you will, what is. The whole, the whole goal before the person is born again, even after the person, even after the moment the person is born again, is to know what is. And better, better said, who is, and specifically, who is present, because the Lord Himself is present. Remember? Uh, just an example. I don't know if you guys have read, uh, excuse me, not read, but had, had a class or anything concerning uh, the temple or the tabernacle. I'm not sure, but you, you, may, get in, you may get to it, or they, people, different, different teachers may have already mentioned it. But the whole thing with offering up sacrifices, uh, I'm, just cons I'm, I'm thinking about Solomon at this moment, when the temple was dedicated. You know, here's Solomon, the temple, the, the temple is finished. Solomon is dedicating the temple unto the Lord. And the whole climax, the whole climactic point is when the Lord fills the temple with Himself. And not only Solomon, but all Israel knows the Lord is present. That's the climactic point. It all came up to that. And that's what it is with our own hearts, to know the one who is present. All right, so I'll just go ahead and continue reading. Um, <clears throat> just with that one, <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, it, 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 may, it may, I don't know whether I want to make these, these comments or not. Nah, I won't. I won't. I won't. I made my comments right here, but I won't read them. All right, going on. I won't read those comments. Okay, well, yeah, maybe I will. All right, back to Psalm 127, verse, uh, verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. All right, Jesus said, I will build my house, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. He also said, while he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. It is consummated. The consummation has come. And then he gave up the ghost, bowed his head, bowed his head, gave up the ghost. Death, burial, resurrection. The Lord has built his house. The question is, whether we know the house is built or not, and how do you know whether the house is built or not, whether someone is in the house or not? Do you see? It all comes down to a person. It all comes down to a person. It's not about seeing the house. No, you know the house is there when you see the one who's present in the house. Remember back with Solomon? Hey, he finished building the temple. But how did everybody know the temple was built? How did they know the work was finished? How did they know it was finished? when God filled it with Himself. At that moment, it's like, okay, it's done. God is in His house. God is present. Okay? So there is, it, with this verse, Psalm 127, verse 1, that was before the crucifixion. Now we look at it because of the cross. So, anyway, that's probably a different class right there, but what it comes down to is man cannot do it. Even in, our, even in our searching of the scriptures, man cannot do it. God is the only one who can lead and guide 
where he desires to lead and guide. All right. <clears throat> uh, the approach for and while studying, and this is a good approach for and while studying. What I mean by approach is uh, how do we approach the scripture before we read or study or anything like that? Uh, go to the scriptures, which is the written word, that we might see the living word, Christ himself, that the same one we have seen in the scriptures might be revealed in us. Because he is in us. We should pray. Ah, here we go. There's my mention of prayer. We should pray for this even before we uh, open the scriptures and even while reading. We should pray for this. Lord, let your scripture be what it is to my heart, the testimony of Jesus Christ. Let your testimony do what you designed it to do in my heart. Bring it, bring my heart unto Jesus Christ. All right, because that's what Jesus said. They are they that testify of me. And then to top it off, when he was speaking to the Jews, he said, and you will not come to me. That was the whole goal of the testimony. And they missed the testimony. And if they miss the testimony, then they're going to miss the purpose of the testimony. And you will not come to me. So they, they have a lot of the Jews. They have a lot of doctrines, a lot of teachings, a lot of messages. It wasn't about that. It was about coming to a person. All right. <clears throat> so that's a good prayer. Uh, Jesus said concerning the Holy Spirit, He will guide you into all truth. And that's John 16, 13. I'm reading some excerpts here from the lesson book. He will guide you into all truth. All truth who is Christ Himself. The Scriptures are true. The Scriptures declare the truth who is Christ himself. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He will guide you into all truth. It doesn't say he will guide you into all knowledge. He will guide you into, well, <laughs> forgive me. There is, okay. It doesn't say he will guide you into all knowledge of man. He will guide you into all understanding of man, or He will guide you into all the wisdom of man. No, no, no. He will guide you into all truth, who is Christ. Truth, who is Christ. The wisdom of God, who is Christ. The knowledge of God, who is Christ. The understanding of God, who is Christ. He will guide you unto a person Himself. All right. I'll read a little bit more. The goal of the Holy Spirit is to direct and bring the full attention of the heart unto Christ. And I have above thing. He will always direct us into His flow. Remember when I was talking about uh, that diagram? It kind of went like this. And it all comes down to a head. It all comes down to a point, And at that point is Christ himself. That's how he directs. That's, that's his flow. He's always flowing towards one. And that one is Christ himself. Now, our heart may be going a different direction, which is, it always is. It's not a matter of Oh, I got off the beaten path, and I'm talking, all right, I'm talking about Jimmy, myself. It's not a matter of, oh, oh no, I just got off the beaten path. No, 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 no. It's more, more correct is to say, I was never on the beaten path. I'm just kind of like, la, 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 la. And here's the Holy Spirit saying, hey, 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 getting my attention. I'm like, what? Here's the way, walk in it. Oh, okay. I didn't even know it was there. It's like one of those, uh, what do they call them? Like hidden doors, hidden passageways. You don't even know it's there. We don't even know the way. That's pretty wild. I don't even know the way. And that's okay. I could very well say I am ignorant 
and someone has to lead me. Someone has to guide me. Someone has to bring me where I can't even come, where I don't even know there is a door to go through, where I don't even know I can come. I'm not sure if that makes sense or not, but that's a great example because that's the way it is. We don't, we don't, we're, we're, we are always going on our own path and the Holy Spirit is the one who grabs our attention and redirects our heart unto a person. And then we discover, wow, I, ne I never knew that was here. I never knew the path was here. I thought it, I thought it was this path. Kind of like, uh, who was it, Lot, who pointed his tent towards Sodom and Gomorrah, who pointed his tent towards Sodom and, you know, uh, you know, that's, that's the way I'm directed. And the Spirit of the Lord draws his attention, hey, no, over here, out, this way, <laughs> this way unto life, this way unto the person. It's like, oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, I have a couple verses here that I want us to read. And... <clears throat> Excuse me. The first one is Luke chapter 3, starting with verse 21. 21 to 22. Ah, yes. This is at the baptism of Jesus, and I may have already uh, shared this with you guys. Luke chapter 3, verse 21 through 22. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. Okay, with that phrase right there, the heaven was opened. First of all, how can a person know that the heaven is opened? They have to be looking up. The heart has been directed upward. The heart has been directed above. Sees the heavens opened. The Holy Spirit directs all the attention of the heart unto a God thing, something of God. Remember Jesus said, I am from above, you from beneath. Everything that is above is of God. Christ is above. Everything below is of man. The heaven was opened. The heavens are opened. This is above, something of God right here, okay? It goes on. And the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape like a dove upon him. I like that. It doesn't say upon a message. It doesn't say upon a teaching. It doesn't say upon a doctrine, but upon a person, the Holy Spirit. First of all, everyone's heart is directed above of God. And what do they find? They find the Holy Spirit descending and they keep following his descent. They keep, listen, they keep an eye on him. They're following him. Where is he going? Okay. Right here. Descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. Remains upon him. Brings the full attention of the heart of everybody that is present and places it upon a person. And that person is the risen Christ because right there with the baptism of Jesus, that is what it represents, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Right there, even before, even before Jesus was crucified, that is what is being declared, be, being declared right there, the resurrected Son. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved, and beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. There you see the full ministry of the Holy Spirit, right there. It's not miracle signs and wonders or talking in this language or that language. Hey, listen to this. All right, don't get upset. I talk in tongues, okay? No es tan bueno, pero en veces se puede comunicar. You understand? I just spoke in tongues right there. All right, there you go. <laughs> no one's laughing. I hate that. There, there's a joke, Lindsay. <laughs> That's my kind of joke right there. Anyway, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> But see, that's what it is. No, no. The whole ministry of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said it. He will guide you into all truth. 
That's what it's all about. Truth is a person. He will guide you. He, he's not going to make, he's not here to do this or that. No, no. Now, I will say this. If your heart needs this or that to come to the goal, hey, it's going to happen. All right? Another example. Let's say uh, you're driving. I don't know if any of you guys have cars. That's all right. If you don't, that's fine. If you're in a vehicle with someone and you all are going to a destination and you get a flat tire, hey, the goal isn't to fix the tire. The goal is the destination. But if you get a flat tire, let's get out and fix that sucker. We're going to fix the tire, get back in, and get on going where we are going. Once again, if the thing is of God, whatever it is, it is designed and purposed of God to bring unto the person of His Son. So, if a miracle is required to bring unto the Son, to direct the heart unto the Son, God has no problem with miracles. Be healed. But the miracle is not what it's all about. That's there for this over here. It's like a flat tire. You keep on going. And I will say this because I mentioned that. You keep on going. Well, really, <laughs> this is going to sound funny and may sound totally incorrect, but the believers are going nowhere. Us as born-again believers, we aren't really going anywhere. We are just coming to know where the Spirit of God has brought us at the moment of new birth. Do you like that? We are coming by the Spirit of God from our understanding, the understanding of man, unto the understanding of God, where God knows what is. And what is, is His Son, who is present. All right? Another passage, <clears throat> uh, John, where is it? John chapter 1 verse 29 through 34. It's, it's the, it, whoops. Huh. Did that. John chapter 1, verse 29. There we go. Verse 34. It's the same thing, the baptism of Jesus. But I'll, I'll start reading this with John. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And I love that. John could never declare that had he not seen Jesus. Don't you love that? What John declared was from him seeing a person. A person. I love that. So anyway, verse 30. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And look at this. Verse 31. Now this is all of us. Verse 31. And I knew him not. Don't you love his honesty? Hey, I was ignorant of him. Completely ignorant. And if we never confess our ignorance, then we confess we see. And Jesus, I think he told it to the Pharisees. You say you see, therefore I can't heal you. But if you were blind and confessed your blindness, I could heal you. Do you see the difference? No, no, I got it together. I see, I, I see all things clearly. No, we don't. <laughs> We're completely blind until the Lord opens our eyes. And He doesn't open our eyes to see things. He opens our eyes to behold the One who is present. We just don't know the One who is present. All right, I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining. Remember, there's the school of Christ, doing everything 
preparing the ground of the heart until, boom, a person. And then from that moment on, it continues being all about a person. And remaining on Him, the same is He which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And look, look, look at what John says here, verse 34, And I saw... Do you, see, do you like that? I love that. He, did, he didn't say, I heard someone tell me. He didn't say, I read it in someone's book. He didn't say, I even read it in the scriptures of the Old Testament. He didn't say any of that. He said, I saw, and therefore I bear record that this is the Son of God. Do you see the order? Now, we have the order all mixed up. We, we truly do. Because we go not having seen, and we're declaring Jesus is the Son of God, which is true. He is the Son of God. But it is way different when we behold the Son of God. Because before that moment, and that moment that I'm talking about is when God reveals His Son in our heart. When God Himself reveals the one who's present. Before that moment, we can go out declaring, hey, Jesus is the Son of God. Oh, praise God. Someone may believe that and say, hey, I, I'll receive that. I'm all for it. I, I knew, I knew He was. And then that person becomes born again. And then like, and then, then they're, they're saying, okay, now I'm born again. Now what? And then there we go. <clears throat> oh, well, <clears throat> excuse me. You need to pray. You need to read the scriptures. You need to stop doing this. You need to stop doing that. Now you need to da 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 da. You need to do, 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 do. You, 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 you. Do you see? All that because, and I'm speaking of myself right here. That's what I did before I went to Bible school. And very sadly, that's what I did even after I graduated from Bible school. Until, thank God for God. <laughs> thank God for God. It all changes when God reveals His Son in the heart. When He makes known the one who's present. Because at that moment, the soul, the heart, the person declares, I know who is present. God has done this in His mercy and in His grace. I could never do this like I could never be born again. Jesus is the Son of the living God. And then the hearers have questions. Okay, so what about? No. It's not about that. It's not about this. It's about continuing in the Scripture so that the Holy Spirit can draw the full attention of our heart and place it upon one man, upon one person. And from that moment onward, continue directing our heart unto that same one who is present again and again and again, and again, and again. I, I love what, uh, what Jesus said to, to Saul of Tarsus in Acts chapter 26, verse 16. He said this, and actually let's go there because uh, that, that's a real good example of the Holy Spirit dealing with his heart even before, excuse me, he was born again. <clears throat> uh, verse Acts chapter 26 I'll start with verse 14 and when we were all and this is just uh, Saul talking to King Agrippa you know what all happened why why he does what he does now right and when we were all fallen to the earth I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue Saul Saul why do you persecute me and then he says this it's hard for you to kick against the pricks and I don't know if I've mentioned this before this particular verse but it's basically this. That verse shows up with, uh, what do you call it, with farming. There is the oxen who have a yoke, 
and then there's the person behind the oxen, and the person has a goal, and all the person wants to do is get to that goal, and the oxen have to be directed by that person for that goal. If not, then the, the ground that they're plowing is going to look like this instead of like this. So they're doing that, and if the oxen start kicking, well, here's how it works. They, <laughs> the, when, when the oxen get off track, the, the farmer has this little thing called a prick or a goad. It's like a stick with a point on it. And to direct the oxen, he kind of pokes at them. Hey, hey, this way, boom, boom, boom. It's like, oh, okay. Now, if the oxen are like, oh, okay, I will yield to you, then they get back on track real easy. If they're stubborn, they start kicking against the point. And that's why Jesus tells Saul here, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. It's hard. It's not a good thing. It's like, I've been trying to direct your heart. And this is before he was born again. I've been trying to direct your heart and you're resisting. Okay. But right here, God finally makes a way into his heart. But Jesus tells him of what was before. You were resisting until now. I have appeared. Resistance is futile <laughs> from this moment onward. I love that of God. All right. Uh, and so uh, he says, And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus who thou persecutest. And then he says this, uh, <clears throat> But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee. And I'll finish it off with Murdoch's translation of the Sri Pishito. He says this, To constitute thee a minister and a witness of this. He just doesn't leave it there. He just doesn't say, I'm going to make you a minister and a witness. No, no, no. No. Just like John the Baptist. I saw him, therefore I declare. All right? A minister and a witness of this, of this, of the following, thy seeing me, and of thy seeing me from this moment onward, from this moment hereafter. And it's a true translation. I've checked it out with interlinears and just different Bible uh, word searches and stuff. I love that. It's all about seeing a person we are to come to begin to see a person and from that moment onward to continue to see that very same person, that very same one, to begin to be magnified in our heart. Because God knows the greatness of Christ, His Son. We are the ones who do not know. He wants to bring our heart from the understanding of man unto his understanding of the greatness of the one who is present. So there's the Holy Spirit, what he does. And I don't know if I want to go to the next paragraph. Yeah, I've got time. All right. And we're going to talk more uh, in a later chapter concerning the Holy Spirit. But that's what it amounts to. He directs and guides and brings the heart unto a person, always. Jesus said also, he will take that which is of mine and declare it unto you. But he won't just declare it unto you. He will declare it unto you in all truth. He'll take, example, he will take the word righteousness and declare righteousness unto you as a person by declaring the person himself who is righteousness. And I love this. I love this. This is great. I, I did a class last week, and it was just great. Because uh, there's, this, there's this verse, and going on with what is, God wants to make known what is. I think it's like uh, in the book of Corinthians. Uh, but it says, <clears throat> you know, in times past, you were. That's before you were born again. Hey, you were some of that. That's what you were, you know. But... Now, ah, uh, since I mentioned it, I, I've, I've got to, I have to read it because I just mentioned it, and now I have to find it 
<laughs> uh, you know what? I may have it. <clears throat> See, that's another thing, good thing about jotting down notes and stuff is that you can keep on meditating upon it. First Corinthians, I like that. First Corinthians, I love this verse. <laughs> Sorry. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse, nope. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. I love this. Paul talks about past and present. Do you know the difference for us, what is past and what is present? Everything that is what was past is before we were born again. Everything that is present is what is. At the moment of new birth, the eternal change of God, the full finished work of God appears in our heart and soul. This one is Christ Himself. All right? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, nor uh, shall inherit the kingdom of God. When I read that, <laughs> I was like, oh no! <laughs> what of me? You know? But see, God doesn't declare our ignorance. God declares the truth, the truth who is Christ. It's like if I mess up, you know, let's say this, I completely lie. So I'm a liar, right? I just said a lie. I'm a liar. And then the Spirit of the Lord comes around and says, you know, well, usually what happens, we're convicted. Oh no, I just lied. God forgive me for lying. Okay, whatever. And then we say, then we go off on our own little spiel and say, God, I'm a liar. I'm a liar. Help me. And he's like, okay, it's all right. Uh, then he, just like here, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, he says, look, that's what was. Now, if you will allow me to direct your heart unto what is present unto him who is present, him who is your life. That is not your life. Let me show you your life, because you obviously don't know who your life is. That's what the Holy Spirit does. See, there's no condemnation in that. Condemnation is when our heart is directed unto what was. The Holy Spirit doesn't do that. He doesn't he doesn't declare not truth. He declares the truth who is Christ, right? He guides us, leads us, guides us into all truth, who is Christ himself. All right, going on with verse uh, 11. And so, I love this. Look at this. Declaring what is, not what was, but what is. And such were, past tense, some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. He never wants us to know what was, but Him who is and Him who is present. And there's much rejoicing. <laughs> there's much rejoicing when we come to know Him who's present. And that knowing is not our knowing. That knowing is the knowing of God, because our knowing, the knowing of man, is always what was. Because, it, look at it, if we go to a natural mirror, we will see a natural reflection of ourselves. We always do. It's impossible not to. But, this mirror right here, is a reflection of the Son of God Himself, the one we are to behold. 
by the Father making him known. I love that. <clears throat> so we didn't get that far, but we can pick it up next week with the same, which actually there's going to be a part two anyway, with the same uh, title for the less, less the chapter, this particular lesson, the approach for and while studying. The Holy Spirit always brings unto a person. Always. He, he always directs. He leads and guides unto the truth who is Christ himself. So, and now I just ran out of time. Uh, but I will ask this. Are there any questions or thoughts or anything that any of you guys may have? Okay, cool deal. All right, so <clears throat> I guess we'll end the class for now. And uh, man, just like I said, do you get, just just a question on on on, on y'all, and it's not a pass or fail thing. <laughs> I'm just curious. Do you guys ever pray like for yourselves, for your hearts, before for all, for any class that you're going to? If not, and it's not even a question. But if if you don't do it, it'd be a good thing to do it for for classes or for services or whatever. Just as I mentioned it at the very beginning of the class, just Hey, pray, present your, present your heart before the Lord that He can lead, guide, and direct it. And just say, hey, Lord, during this time, just do what you want to do in my heart. And I'll leave it with you. And we can trust the Lord. He's good. He is faithful. In fact, He is the only good, and He is the only faithful, <laughs> because we are not. So uh, I'll see you in our next class. The Lord bless you guys, all right? We'll see you.